Committee. My name is Richard Carmona. I'm the 17th Surgeon General of the United States, and I'm profoundly grateful for your invitation to me and my Surgeon General colleagues to testify before you today. I want to thank you for your interest and commitment to these very important national public health issues. I had the privilege of working with many of you during four, the four years I served as United States Surgeon General, and I stand ready to continue to partner with you to improve the health and well-being of our great nation and the world. Being nominated and confirmed as Surgeon General is still a surreal event for me. I will never forget the extraordinary privilege that the President of the United States and the Senate extended to me in allowing me to serve my country once again in uniform. As grateful as I am to my country for the opportunities that I have been afforded, that sense of appreciation will never allow me to become complacent in my commitment to continue to improve the health, safety, and security of our nation and the world. For as members of a very small and unique fraternity of Surgeons General of the United States, we all believe that once a Surgeon General, always a Surgeon General. I came to Washington, D.C., having served as a United States Army Special Forces Medic and Weapons Specialist, a registered nurse, police officer, SWAT team leader, trauma surgeon, and CEO of a public health and hospital system and a university professor. I also came to the Office of Surgeon General knowing what it feels like to be a poor Hispanic child growing up in New York City, a high school dropout whose family often had to stand in line at public hospitals waiting for health care and knowing, not knowing how we would pay for the doctor's bill and sometimes not even knowing where our next meal would come from. I came to our nation's capital ready to serve all people and prepared to carry on what I believed was a tradition of implementing nonpartisan evidence-based solutions to public health challenges. My fellow U.S. Surgeons General warned me that partisan political agendas often undermine the public health and well-being of the nation. During my first year as Surgeon General, I was still quite politically naive in the ways of the Beltway. As I witnessed partisanship and polit political manipulation, I was astounded, but also unsure of what I was witnessing, for I had no reference point. I asked myself whether this was just happening to me as a new Surgeon General, or whether this was the norm for all Surgeons General. I turned to my fellow Surgeons General, the men and women who came before me and had made tremendous positive contributions to the science and practice of public health, who had saved and improved millions of lives through their work and dedication. They became my mentors. They said that they had all been challenged and had to fight political battles in order to do their job as the doctor of the nation. But each agreed that never had they seen Washington, D.C. so partisan or a new Surgeon General so politically challenged and marginalized as during my tenure. They told me that although most Americans believe that their Surgeon General has the ability to impact the course of public health as the nation's doctor, the reality is that the nation's doctor has been marginalized and relegated to a position with no independent budget and with supervisors who are political appointees with partisan agendas. Anything that doesn't fit into the political appointee's ideological, theological, or political agenda is often ignored, marginalized, or simply buried. The problem with this approach is that in public health, as in a democracy, there is nothing worse than ignoring science or marginalizing the voice of science for reasons driven by changing political winds. The job of the Surgeon General is to be the doctor of the nation, not the doctor of a political party. The good news is that there is a straightforward remedy to the problem of partisan politics undermining the health and well-being of our nation. That solution is to empower the Office of the Surgeon General and the United States Public Health Service Commission Corps. This would not be a radical new approach. It would simply be reinstating the roles and responsibilities of the Office of the Surgeon General that have been slowly eroded since politicians decided in the late 1960s that the Office of the Surgeon General should be disempowered and its authorities placed within offices of the Department of Health and Human Services political appointees. Historically, the Surgeons General have occupied increasingly embattled positions where each has had to fight to scientifically address the contemporary health issues of the nation and the world within an increasingly partisan agenda that is often devoid of open discussions of scientific evidence or data. To address these problems, we must empower, fund, and support the Office of the Surgeon General and the United States Public Health Service Commission Corps to serve the people and the world and not a par political party. The Commission Corps delivers arguably the best evidence-based health care in the world with unparalleled passion and dignity. They are a precious national resource 
that can be used much more efficiently and effectively to serve the public health needs of our nation and the world. Require a uniform, physically fit professional commission corps with continuity of operations between administrations and surgeons general, as is the basic protocol among all of our fellow uniform services. And the practice of the political discretionary awarding of a four-star admiral rank to the HHS Assistant Secretary for Health, who may be a civilian political appointee with no uniform service experience. Ensure that all future Surgeons General are nominated by the President of the United States from the ranks of the career United States Public Health Service Commission Corps officers based on merit and without political, ideological, or theological filters. This is just as the United States Army, Navy, and Air Force Surgeon Generals are selected and how the United States Surgeon General was selected until the position became increasingly politicized. In addition, we should consider going back to the non-political U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps officers ascending the ranks based on merit in order to command our public health service agencies, again, just as our sister uniform services do and have done for centuries. In closing, I hope that you will hear me and my fellow Surgeon Generals today and make the decisions and changes that only you can make so that future Surgeon Generals do not have to struggle against impossible odds to ensure the public's health is free of political manipulation. I hope that you will agree with us that the citizens of the United States deserve a Surgeon General as the doctor of our nation and leader of the United States Public Health Service Commission Corps, who is empowered and supported by the United States government to address our national and global health issues transparently, openly, and apolitically with the best science in order to improve the health, safety, and security of our nation and the world. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.